really small stuff that I was letting get to me that I shouldn't let, like, doing this stupid stuff. Like, and then get punished for it. Just get angry about it. You know why? Because she carried you. Now your responsibility is to get in the position to carry her. She is the most important woman you will ever meet. Right up there with your wife. When you marry a woman, you find a woman, you want to treat her good. So treat your mama good. Because you want to keep that woman. So keep your mama. Keep her happy. Keep her smiling. You at an age now where you believe that, you, that I don't need you no more. This is when you need her the most. Understand me? You only get one. Take it from somebody that knows. You only get one. If you look, if you go and look on my phone, look at my phone now. There's a picture of me leaning next to a lady, just like this. I miss her every day. I miss her every single day. I wake up in the morning and I wake up right away. I can't call my mom. My mom was my G, dude. My mom was that chick. If I if I had a bank heist to do, she was gonna drive the car. And if we got caught, she wasn't gonna snitch. I can say that about my mom. And I'm telling you something. You are blessed to have your mama right now. When I was 14, I was probably like you. I probably thought my mama knows you were talking about. I thought she was crazy. All of it. But at 44, what I wouldn't give to be in your shoes. You know, you know not only you guys talk about I was world champion and all that you got on the pictures, I give all that back if they let me get my mom. I give it all back if they give me my mom. I give back every dollar I made, every house I ever lived in, every car I ever owned. And that's a lot of shit. I give it all back. If I knew I'm a mom. You, there's nothing in this world like a mom. Just being somebody that the neighborhood respected. That my mama could be proud of. Nothing's ever come easy eye. for Nate Campbell, and he doesn't always make it easy for himself. But, um, again, if he wants to continue his career at the elite level here, he has a real obstacle to overcome tonight. And Nate's doing a good job because this is what you need to do. You cannot sit in the middle of the ring with a tall guy. you got to push him against the ropes and then take advantage of Oh, that was oh, a good yeah, shot. That right he's, hand hurts he's Kuniga. Concussed. Kuniga got hurt with that roundhouse right. Staggered back. Campbell can sense it. Campbell hooks to the back. about this whole thing putting the guns down and blows up i like it. one of my friends came up with that idea actually and um somebody saw it on his page and stole the idea and ran with it and i'm like doesn't matter who did who got it at this i like the fact that it that it's happening but it needs to be in a controlled environment yeah. see that watch my hand you hear, you hear my jab with that 
Um, I'm in the process of purchasing, purchasing a gym downtown, and me and Lil Duval, that's my little dude, and um, we're opening a boxing program for kids, and I really want to have like a, like a Thursday night, every Thursday night or something like that, of a Friday night where you everybody come in and you get the waiver signed, and the guys come in and how how they pay they pay instead of paying gym dues, they pay like ten bucks. Everybody come in, whatever issues they got, they squash them. And you squash them over three minutes, three rounds. But in order for you to get that, the, the, you'll learn that to, to make it through that three minutes, three rounds, you gotta, you gotta work out, you gotta train. Do you think that idea come from the uh, social media beef with the two celebrities, Chris Brown and... Um... That's old school. It is old school, but nobody thought about it until that was brought into the light. Let me tell you something. <laughs> The worst thing that people can ever do is say that celebrities ever brought something good to black, the black community, black celebrities, for the most part, especially today. I'm not talking about before. Today, black celebrities are so self-involved self and self-indulgent, they, they can give less than a damn about the black community because they don't consider themselves to be a part of the black community. Guys like Floyd May Mayweather that make dumbass statements about not being, they're, they're not being racism or they don't see racism. Sorry, sorry. Question. Who, who will win between you and Rocky III? Rocky III. I'm trying to take which one was Rocky III. That was where everybody had them at Celebrity Gym. The, the, the dancing monkeys in the gym and all. Racism, Lil Wayne, um, Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith, um, Ray Lewis. These cats, they, they've been so far removed from the black community. I mean, white people can piss in their face and, and tell them it's raining. They be like, oh. But at the end of the day, that's just something that black men who grew up with black fathers were taught to do. You squash this, you squash this, you squash this, and we don't have to, nobody has to die. Right, right. So that, damn the celebrities. Them celebrities are the least important people on the planet. Oh, I'm not gonna say that's true, but. They are, I mean, it, it, let's really be honest. They're only important to themselves and those around them. Because for the most part, the average celebrity does not do anything, anything of it. They'll give, they'll give money and put it out there because it's a tax write-off. Let's call it what it is. But a cat, but I know a lot of cats that don't have any money to, to throw around like that, that go out and give their time, show their presence in the community. Right. And that's what's more important. Okay. I feel you with that. Um, did you ever consider fighting Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao after you obtained the 2009 title? Well, in 08, I won the title. But okay, when I moved up from 126 to 130, Floyd Mayweather was at 130, and they were, HBO was trying to lobby for me to fight May Mayweather. And um, they offered him 1.6, and they told me, we'll pay you about 1.2. Sold to the man in black. <laughs> right. that, that, that's how I was running. Right. But Mayweather decided that there wasn't enough money. He said it was slave wages for those kinds of, the kinds of fights they were asking him to fight. Mm -hmm. And he made, and business-wise, business, business models, it, was, it wasn't slave wages. It was just, there was more money to be had. But Floyd was allowed to circumvent the system, whereas other fighters like me had to fight everybody. Right. But Manny Pacquiao, when I was world champion with three belts, there was only one other belt that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Pacquiao fought David Diaz for it and won it. Mm -hmm. and Don King called Bob Arum about making the fight, and I never get the conversation that went like this. Don King, hey Don, hey Jay, hey Bob, why don't we make this fight with Nate Campbell and, and Manny Pacquiao? That's what he talks. And, and, and Bob Arum like, well, Don is not going to pay more than 3.5 to 5 million for Nate's side. You know, is it worth it to you? I told Don, on speakerphone, I'll take it. Oh, you take you take the bill that we call it even. And he's like, um, the fight was supposed to be made. It was supposed to be the biggest fight in the, the, light, the lightweight division since Pernell Whitaker had all four belts. So what led you to consider becoming an activist? I don't know if I'm an activist. I just think I'm a black man that's, that believes that my people have been treated unfairly. And they call it what they want. But um, I educated myself. I, 
at 22, I became an ordained minister in the Cody Church. But in the process, I was a reader. But I was also a studier, and I began to study. I'm like, I don't know about this Bible thing sometimes. Right. And I began to go into that and find out exactly what thus saith the Bible, opposed to what I believe thus saith the Lord was. Mm -hmm. It didn't match up. And I got to this chapter in Ephesians that said, slaves obey your masters. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. And um, I began to do my research. And um, I don't consider myself a Christian. I believe in, in a I believe in the higher power. I'm the same way. I'm the spiritual person. Right. I believe in the higher power. Mm -hmm. And what I believe in is anytime you take a group of black people or any people and you subjugate them under the religion of a white man who's in power and the black people accept it, that it's time for somebody to stand up. Mm -hmm. Because I just I can't believe it what, what I was told. Um I, I, also, I also have one of, have a favorite saying. The opposite of courage is not cowardice, but com but conformity. To conform to what you have been told. And I know how my people got Christianity. By, by the whip and lash. So how can you tell me, you know, and now you watch black women with the feminist movement and tell you that, that the black man is oppressing them. Like, and we unemployed at 18 percent rate. We ain't got no job, get you, man. Yeah. And you know, racism is racism, but there are other components to racism, like classism mm -hmm. and feminism. Mm -hmm. And anytime a black woman tells me something that has a feminist feel to it, I don't find her beautiful. Mm -hmm. She no longer is beautiful to me. I, I no longer desire to have a have a conversation with her. So I realized that I need to enlighten black men and enlightened black women. And so I now have a show called Experience the Galaxy. And um, it's on LDLTV.com. Um, you can get it on Facebook Live. You can get it on um, you can get it on Periscope at experiencethegalaxy.com. It's on all four, it's on all four major um, networks. You can also hit me up, you know, on at my at my email, Nate at Galaxy War, at Nate at Gal Nate, Nate at the Gal experience the Galaxy .com. And um, I want I want black people to understand we are beautiful, we're great, wonderful people. And, I mean, put, we 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 innovated and, and invented everything that is. And for us not to be spoken of in history, I mean, there's more to us than slavery. Let me ask you this: uh, Which do you think? Which one stands out more to you? Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter? Neither. Neither. Why do you say that? Black Lives Matter is a homosexual movement. It's a movement by the LG, LBGTQ desired, designed to, to, to split black people down the middle. See, here's the issue. We, we get caught up in these black lives. Oh, oh, I know you have. I know you have. But look up George Soros, who, runs, who, who funds Black Lives Matter. Look at the women that, that, that are up there in front of Black Lives Matter. Lesbians. Let's call it what it is. When you have it here in Jacksonville, you're not seeing just lesbians, you're seeing nothing but black people. But that's the whole point. That's the whole point. If you talk about femin the feminist movement, mm -hmm. you didn't just see white women, you saw black women. Mm -hmm. But guess who guess who that guess who that benefited? The feminist movement benefited white women. Because black women didn't have a problem with the black man. Actually, we were married at a 70% clip. We had 45% business ownership. We was doing good. The black man worked, the white, the black woman stayed home. We didn't have a problem with each other. The black woman, the white woman and her man was having an issue, but they needed numbers on the petition. So they went and got Shamika, um, Betty Jean, Gloria, and Wanda, and got their name on the petition. While Mary, Catherine, you know what I'm saying, Betty, and all those women. And here's the thing, remember, all these black women was out there marching this women's march this other, other day. Right, right, right. What for? If anybody should have been marching, it should have been black men. We the ones that's unemployed. We the ones disenfranchising and, and, and imprisoning a 51%. We make a 51% of the prisons. But here's the problem with black women. Black women were so busy following the white woman into hell that they don't understand our families are broken. Mm -hmm. You as educated as the black woman is, she is 23% of the female prison population in America and climbing faster than every other dynamic in the country. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to me, don't talk to me about Black Lives Matter. Let's talk about Black Families Matter. Okay. Let's talk about black, black men and women need to get together and stop tying ourselves to bull. Our problem is we so tired. We are so tied 
to other people's struggle. Everybody piggybacks on our struggle. Everybody piggybacks on what we're going through. Homosexual movement told you that 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 the gay movement, you know what I'm saying, that they just like the blacks were. No, I was born black. I was born this color. I can't help who I am, but you can help if you put on some your, your sister draws and prance around the city. Let's call it what it is. So I don't hate nobody. But stop, but stop making your struggle like in the mind. I've been going through this over 400 years. We've been free for 51. Well, there you have it. We're here with Nate Campbell, and I want to thank you so much for letting views come into your studio or to the gym to interview you. It's a pleasure sitting here to interview you. Thank you. That's it for views for the street. We out. Peace.